Updated December 29, 2017 10 hours 4 minutes and 56 seconds The federal government insists it is close to securing a free trade agreement with Indonesia, despite missing a self-imposed end-of-year deadline. Key Points China-Australia Free Trade Agreement has significantly increased wine exports Talks of Australia's trade agreement with Indonesia have been pushed back to 2018 Federal Government will try to entice Canada back to Trans-Pacific Partnership The two countries have been making a concerted effort to finalise the deal since March and had expected to be able to close the deal in November. Having missed that mark, it was then hoped it could be concluded in December, but talks will now stretch into 2018. The number one priority right now is to conclude the Indonesia Free Trade Agreement, Trade Minister Stephen Chobo said. We know our trade and economic relationship with Indonesia is underway given the relative significance of both Indonesia's and Australia's economies. The coalition will be hoping it can have the deal signed in time for a special meeting of Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN, in Sydney in March. Mr Chobo said he was very close to finalising the agreement but is no longer willing to set out a time frame. Like any trade deal much of the work is done and we're getting very close to the end now, but like always the most difficult components are left till last, he said, but look there's very good will on both sides. We just need to bed down these last few issues. Government attempts to lure Canada it will be a year of tough trade talks in 2018, with the federal government also trying to lure Canada back to the Trans-Pacific Partnership TPP. In November, Canada walked away from the groundbreaking 11-nation trade deal at the last minute. It was a major blow to the TPP, which has already been revived once before after the United States abandoned the deal. We're putting a lot of focus on the TPP-11. We're obviously very invested in trying to make that happen, Mr Chobo said. The National Farmers Federation is hoping both the free trade agreement with Indonesia and the TPP can be secured soon. The more markets that can be opened up, the more alternatives and options Australian farmers will have, Chief Executive Tony Ma said. The success of the free trade agreements with South Korea 2014, China 2015 and Japan 2017 is driving the push for further trade liberalisation. Wine, dairy, beef, sheep, wool and horticultural exporters have been among the big winners from the deals, according to Mr Ma. There's no doubt that the China agreement has had a huge impact, a huge positive impact, for Australian farmers, Mr Ma said. Wineries winning thanks to China trade deal gaps did wines in Victoria's high country is now catering to customers at its Salador and thousands of kilometres away in China. It's a massive market in China and I think it's the tip of the iceberg for us, said Cara Hinton, Gaps did's export sales manager. Since the China-Australia Free Trade Agreement came into force two years ago, their exports have taken off. We've seen a definite increase, which seems to be continually growing, Ms Hinton said. It hasn't just stopped and started, we're continuing to see growth in that area, we haven't had much focus for export until the last two years so it's pretty exciting for us to see where we can go with it. Before the deal with China was signed, import tariffs on wine were 14%. From 1 January 2018, they'll be 2.9% and the following year they will be eliminated entirely. Australia's wine industry has grown 130% in the last year and is now worth $500 million annually. Topics, trade, business economics and finance, government and politics, federal government, Australia first posted December 29, 2017 6 hours 33 minutes and 43 seconds.